So hi, hello everyone. My name is Aisha Ariba. I am the assistant professor of Department of Clinical Psychology from Yanapoya School of Allied Health Sciences. So today we are going to learn about perception. So before going to perception, we should understand what the sensation is. So we have five sense organs, right? The eyes, ears, nose, skin and taste buds. So whatever we are seeing or whatever we are hearing, it has been sensed through the sense organs. So these sense organs are activated, that is they receive the messages, they translate the messages and it is transmitted to the brain from the outside world. So this is the basic concept of sensation. The food, maybe the smell or maybe the sound we hear or maybe the touch we are feeling. So everything is because of the sensation. So in simple terms, Sensation is the process of receiving, translating and transmitting messages from the outside world to the brain. So we have mentioned about translating. So the translating, if we put in a, uh, a regular word, translating is also called transduction. So transduction is that light, for example, say light, light is not, light is not sensed in the same way. So when we see light, it has to be transmitted, it has to be translated to a neural activity, then only the brain will be able to identify, okay, I have sensed a light. So this process is called transduction. So sensation is the process of receiving, translating and transmitting messages from the outside world to the brain. Now we'll see the perception. So we have sensed a uh, different aspect, but all these are meaningful, sorry, meaningless but we have to give meaning to the sensations that we have received. So this, for, this phenomenon is called perception. So in perception, we are giving meaning to the sensation. That is, we are interpreting the sensation. So perception is the method by which the brain takes all the sensation a person experienced at any given moment and allow them to be interpreted at, in some meaningful fashion fashion that is we are interpreting or the sensation so that is perception in this figure you can see that a person is perceiving the number as six and the other person as nine both are right if we took look into their point of view because the way they perceive is from their point of view so perception is very subjective that doesn't mean that you are wrong and the other one is right maybe you both are right so even in this example we have known the example that elephant in the room so all these people are blind. They are perceiving the elephant from different aspects, from different area. But all of them are right. Maybe they are just the trunk or maybe the tail, maybe the leg. They are only perceiving one part of the elephant. For them, they are right. And if you take in a whole way, everybody is right. So it's all about the perception. As I mentioned, perception is a very subjective matter. But there are certain perception that we perceive in a similar way every individual perceive it in a similar way. These are called perceptual constancies. That is, an individual as perception might be, some similarities exist in how people perceive the world around them. As such, there are some circumstances during which stimuli are seemingly automatically perceived in all, almost the same way by various individuals. I'll give you an example. As you have seen in this picture, People usually by, you know, we perceive as the person who is wearing a red dress is near to us rather than the two person who is wearing a black dress far from us. We don't perceive this as the person that is behind the two person that is far from us is small comparing to the one who is wearing red dress is near to us. We don't uh, as uh, as large to us. We don't perceive it in such way. We, for, we perceive it as the person who is wearing red dress is near and the other two is far. That is the size is constant. We determine, we perceive the size as constant. This is called size constancy. As you can see in this example, there is two nail polish bottle here. The one that is near to us is seen as a huge in size. That is far from us is seen as small in size. But we don't perceive it as smaller or bigger. We perceive it as the same size. We know that one is far and one is near. That doesn't mean that if the size is different. So as I said, this is the size constancy. It is the tendency to interpret an object as always being the same actual size 
regardless of its distance. So as in the example, if an object that is normally perceived to be about 6 feet tall appears very small on the retina, it will be interpreted as being far away from us. That doesn't mean that the size is changing. The size here is constant. As you can see in this example, door. If we perceive the door, first door, rectangle shape, second door and third door, slight difference in this shape. But we know that the shape is not changing. We just, the shape is constant here. Another example, clock, the way from where we perceive the shape of the clock will be different, but we know that the shape is not changing. The shape is constant. It's just the way how we perceive it. This is called the shape constancy. It is the tendency to interpret the shape of an object as constant even when it changes on the retina. Another example, as you can see here in the cup, it has two colors, I mean two light or two colors it is there. One is brighter and the other is a bit shadow. But we know that the cup is white. It's just the shadow or the brightness that has making them different. So we know that the color is constant here or the brightness is constant here. It's just that the sunlight is reflect, reflecting in certain part of the cup and in certain part it is not reflecting. So we are sure that the, the color or the brightness is constant here. So this is called the brightness constancy. It is the tendency to perceive the apparent brightness of an object as the same even when the light condition changes. So these three are the constancy, the perceptual constancy, size, size constancy, then shape constancy and brightness constancy. Next, perceptual organization. We have perceived things, but how do we organize them? What are the criteria or how do we perceive when we sense from different organs? What is the principle called? So the process of organizing visual field into meaningful holes is known as the form perception. That is Gestalt or Gestalt principle. According to the Gestalt psychologist, we perceive different stimuli not as a discrete element but as an organized whole that carried a different form. That is the whole is different than some of its part. We don't perceive, when we see something, we don't perceive it as a different parts, we only perceive it as a whole. So there are different principles, we'll look into that. So you'll get a more idea about what is Gestalt principle. So is, as you see in this figure, some might have perceived this as two faces, others might have perceived this as a goblet. This phenomenon is called figure ground principle. That is, the, when there is two different contrasting colors, we have a tendency, our brain has a tendency to keep one color as the background and the other color as a figure. So as you can see in the first photo, most of us might have perceived the black as the figure, that is two faces and in the second photo, you might have uh, perceived the black as a goblet, that is the black is the figure. So as I said, this is the figure ground relationship or figure ground principle. Here, it is the tendency to perceive objects or figures as existing on a background. When we look at a surface, certain aspect of the surface clearly stand out as separate entities, whereas the others do not. So this is the basic example of figure ground relationship or figure ground principle. Let's look, let's look into another example. Here, as you can see, you might have perceived this as three sets of circles. We don't perceive it as six set, different circles, different lines of circles. We perceive here as six, sorry, three sets of circles. This is called the principle of similarity. That is, objects that are similar to one another have similar characteristic as perceived as group. We perceive here as a three different uh, groups. Same, another example. Here, as you can see, the three, there are circles there, there is a square is there. So we perceive here as the, the circles as one group, square as one group, then again circle and again square. We don't perceive it in a uh, what horizontal way, we perceive it here in a vertical way. So this is an example also as of a principle of similarity. Now, as you see in this picture, we perceive here as A to B and C to D, not as A to D or C to B because we see A to B as a continuous line. So this principle is called 
principle of continuity. The principle states that we tend to perceive objects as belonging together even if they appear to form a, as if they form a continuous pattern. Here we perceive it as a continuous pattern. Another example, another principle here is the closure. That is here we perceive the first figure as a circle, the second as a square. We don't perceive is it as a different parts even though the figure is incomplete there is a gap in between so we don't perceive it as incomplete we perceive it as a square and a circle so our brain has the tendency to complete the incomplete figures if we know that figure how it looks like so this principle is called the principle of closure that is the tendency to complete figures that are incomplete as a talented artist can give the impression of an entire face with just a few clearly face you know strokes of the pen or brush the viewers fill the details this is the principle of closure so let's summarize what we have learned so sensation is the process where we receive translate and transmit the messages from the environment to the brain that is we are translating into a neural activity perception is the selection organization and interpretation of the sensation that we have perceived selecting the perception we organize it to different forms and then we interpret it as perception okay so there are three types of perceptual constants size constancy shape constancy and brightness constancy in perceptual organization we have studied five perceptual organization first is the proximity that is the place that is uh, you know placed together similarity based on the similarity of the objects then continuity based on the continuity of the object closure that we perceive an incomplete figure as complete then figure and ground segregation figure and ground principle or figure and ground relationship that is one if there is two contrasting color we perceive one as the background and the other as the figure so this is the uh, this is what we will learn be learning about perception thank you very much